let's now look at a typical live tank circuit breaker. These are very different to the dead tank circuit breakers. Firstly, we have the input terminal and the output terminal. We have the vertical bushings, which contain the circuit breaker contacts. And finally, the mechanism box, which contains all the open and closed circuits and mechanical linkages to operate the circuit breaker. We obviously don't have any space in a live tank circuit breaker for any covered transformers, so they need to be purchased and positioned separately. This may increase the amount of space needed inside the substation. Let's look inside the circuit breaker bushing. At the top of the bushing, we have the fixed contact. Below, we have the moving contact. All housed inside the arcing chamber. The arcing chamber will be filled with the insulated medium, which is normally SF6 gas for most high voltage circuit breakers. At the moment, the circuit breaker is closed. Let's now open the circuit breaker. When the moving contact changes position, the pressurised SF6 gas floods into the arcing chamber, increasing the dielectric strength between the circuit breaker contacts and quenching the arc. The SF6 gas is also used as an insulating medium to separate the live conductors from the insulators. This reduces the overall dimensions of the circuit breaker. The high voltage SF6 circuit breaker is a very advanced design and it's quite simple in its operation compared to the earlier circuit breaker types that we used to use. It relies on the fact that the dielectric strength of SF6 increases as it becomes pressurised. The shape of the gas chamber inlets are designed so that as the circuit breaker mechanism opens the contact, it also compresses the SF6 gas as it enters the circuit breaker chamber. This creates a high pressure SF6 zone inside the chamber, which prevents the restriking voltage bridging the contacts. On extra high voltage circuits above 230 kV, one set of circuit breaker contacts may not be enough to quench the arc. In these situations, we use a double head circuit breaker. These have duplicated arcing chambers, one in each horizontal leg, both operated from the same mechanism. Let's look inside the circuit breaker to see how that works in practice. Here we have the two sets of fixed contacts and moving contacts. At the moment the circuit breaker is closed. Let's now open the circuit breaker. Sometimes, on extra high voltage circuit breakers, even having multiple circuit breaker contact chambers is not enough and we need to add grading capacitors. These are positioned in parallel with all the circuit breaker contacts. Grading capacitors ensure uniform voltage distribution across all contact points during normal and switching system operation. They can also be used to increase the switching capacity of the circuit breaker under certain conditions. Here we have some typical examples of grading capacitors on some high voltage circuit breakers.